Dear ladies and gentlemen, dear Professor Janssen, thank you very much for the invitation to this meeting. It's my pleasure to continue where um, Pietro just stopped and to talk uh, to you about the virological biomarkers that play a role in stopping these uh, new treatments. And uh, so there is evidence that stopping new, tre new treatments can be helpful for some patients. Many of them will respond, and the question is only, who are those patients who will respond, and how does this, um, yeah, what is the course after stopping treatment, and uh, what can be the endpoints? So one endpoint is, of course, S antigen loss, and this would be ideal, but I think if we follow this path, we have to get acquainted to the thought that there are S antigen positive endpoints that can occur after stopping nukes, and here's just a very brief figure that shows you how how it can happen. So we stop nukes and we have a relapse in HPV DNA levels. Um, following this, we have a relapse in ALT levels. And after this, we have an increase of immune control over the infection and S antigen levels start to decrease, ideally to undetectable levels. But as I said, another endpoint would be that HPV DNA remains under the limit of treatment indication. This is the finite study. I just um, put this figure on the screen again to show you the proportion of, di of different endpoints that can be achieved. Oh, can we go back? Can we go back one slide? Can you just go back? That would be nice. So to show you the different Can you go back one slide? Of, uh, of the different endpoints that can be achieved. Thank you. That can be achieved. So there is um, a number of patients that need restart of treatment after the nukes have been withdrawn, but there is a large number of patients who have either S antigen losses here or very low HPV DNA levels and normal ALT levels, so they can remain off treatment. And also those patients here who have a high rebound of HPV DNA levels greater than 2,000, they have normal ALT levels or close to normal, and they can remain off treatment. So there is a large proportion of patients that potentially benefit from this treatment approach. And the question is just how can we find out who that is? And yeah, this is not only in this study, and Pietro has also shown you the clinical evidence. This is just to show you how in e antigen positive and e antigen or e antigen negative patients, the proportion of patients who remain in durable biochemical and virologic um, remission remains after time, so that it's really, across different studies, a significant proportion of patients. So, and the evidence is so strong that the recommendation to stop treatment has found entrance into, into uh, several treatment guidelines. So this is a figure that depicts you just the, the, the concept, and it's a, it's a quite busy figure, and I will walk you through it very quickly the concept of what happens after stopping. So um, there are different phases that can be depicted, uh, and actually this is an idea of Thomas Burke, who has said there is a lag phase of uh, various uh, duration that can be up to, up to a year, and then we have to, the, re the reactivation phase, and here HPV DNA is coming up again to higher or lower levels, and then the outcome can be either it's going down again spontaneously or it remains elevated. Same with ALT, ALT flares after HPV DNA comes up. There can be severe flares and there can be spontaneous uh, remission. And then S antigen levels, they can either become undetectable or they can remain practically unchanged or they can decrease over time to a more beneficial treatment um, uh, uh, disease um, stage, possibly. So, first of all, why not looking at HPS antigen levels? It's obvious that patients who lose S antigen levels will have a certain kinetic in S antigen levels, and it has been shown also in the very first trial that looked at stopping nukes that S antigen levels at end of treatment, they have a strong association with S antigen loss following treatment termination. Here, this is a Greek study, and you see those patients who will eventually lose S antigen have significantly lower S antigen levels when treatment is stopped. And this has been confirmed in Asian patients here. We see a study by Yang published in 2018, and they could show that there is yeah, a continuous increase uh, or 
um, yeah, a negative correlation with S antigen levels and the chance of losing S antigen after stopping nukes. And their best group was actually those patients with very low S antigen levels. Uh, unfortunately, patients with S antigen levels uh, below 100 units per ml are very, very rare, at least in Western populations. So this is not something we can really hope for. But it's clear that the level of S antigen that remains after stopping treatment has a strong association with S antigen loss. Are rare. HPV RNA levels. They have been described to be associated with a viral rebound after nuke discontinuation. But the question is, is the rebound really a problem? Do we need the rebound or not? Is it a valuable event after stopping nukes? And I will come back to this later. But we can obviously pre, um, associate the rebound after stopping nukes with presence of HPV RNA when the treatment is terminated. And here, this is a very new study. Um, and this is one of the first practical approaches, I think. These are E-antigen positive patients who have been treated with nukes. They lost E-antigen. Then the question is, can we safely stop them or will they reactivate? Will they have a clinical relapse? In this case, it was defined as HPV DNA greater 2,000 units and ALT elevation. And we could clearly, we can clearly see here that the HPV RNA levels at end of treatment are significantly lower at all time points at end of treatment and, of course, following the time of treatment. So this could be um, a scenario where HPV RNA um, could give a real add-on to current knowledge. Anti-HPC levels have been assessed uh, in few studies, and uh, we know that they have an inverse correlation to the replication of HPV DNA, so when it's higher, then the replication is generally lower, and, hep and they obviously reflect the control over the hepatitis by B virus during nuke treatment. So if they are higher at stopping nukes, then the clinical relapse is, uh, is, is much lower. If they are lower here, under 100 EU per ml, then we have a high risk of clinical relapse, and here is also a... Yeah, a continuous, uh, continuously increased risk with lower anti-HPC levels. So they are all also potentially useful. Coming back to our, um, our figure here, um, so S antigen levels are obviously, um, can obviously be helpful. What's the role for new biomarkers? And um, yeah, I want to go back to the flare itself. Is the flare itself a biomarker? So a flare is something that can be experienced in almost all patients. This is a figure from a study in Asian patients, but also in the Greek patients and in the study from Germany. Virtually all patients had an HPV DNA flare. And uh, this is just a very uh, naive figure. I'm not an immunologist, but this is what I imagine that happens after this flare comes up. So here the flare comes up, and it causes a... Uh, CD8 T cell mediated response in those patients who have, for some reason, be prepared during the nuke treatment. The other patients, they just don't make it, and the re-exposition to HPV DNA doesn't cause such a strong flare. So flares have been classified as good as, and bad flares because some of them can cause harm to the liver, and some are obviously associated with response. The question is, does it really hold true? Is it really that some flares and potentially the higher flares following um, yeah, of HPV DNA and ALT are associated with a decrease of HBS antigen and some are just um, harmful for the liver and there's no effect on HBS antigen. And this is a question that's still open and I can show you some preliminary data from our own studies that might, may a little bit shed light on this. But first of all, I show, the, show you uh, results from a study from a small cohort in from Hanover, from Germany, they, those patients have been stopped, and after nuke withdrawal, there was a clear association with the level of HPV DNA and the flare. So the HPV DNA increase after stopping has a clear association with the with the increase of ALT levels. So, and and it's a little bit before. So this is really an important trigger, obviously. And this was also. Uh, yeah, and these are the HPV DNA flares in non-responders and responders from the Greek study, and we see there are no real differences in the amount of flares. So HPV DNA flares equally in all of those patients here. ALT flares in the same cohort have 
very similar extents here. You can see uh, high and low ALT flares in responders and non-responders. And here you see profiles of HPV markers and ALT in patients with S antigen loss from an Asian study. And also here you can see the S profiles of those patients who eventually lose S antigen. And you can see that most of them have very low HPV DNA flares and low ALT flares. So the question is, is a large flare really necessary? Or has everything been set already during the nuke treatment? Have the T cells been reinvigorated and they just need a little flare? This is an analysis from the finite study, and this is uh, something from our own lab, and I just show it to you now. We looked at the samples from the finite study, and we could find the same. We see a HPV DNA flare, which is significantly lower in those patients who lose S antigen, and we see um, uh, an RNA flare, which is similar, but uh, much, much lower in those patients who lose S antigen. RNA is undetectable in all those who lose it at the end of treatment. Anti-HBC also have flares, but they are not different across two, the two populations. But we see that the flare is smaller in those patients who, seems to be a little bit smaller in the patients who clear S. ALT is significantly higher in those patients who do not clear S, and much lower in those who clear S. And uh, not big differences have been seen for correlated antigen, but also here. And this is probably due to the... Um, method of quantifying it, we see a much lower flare in correlated antigen. So, um, yeah, I'm coming to the end. Obviously, a very strong flare is not associated with loss of antigen, but we know that we must not terminate the treatment too early, so there's a lot of research to be done to find out how these novel biomarkers can be used. There's one algorithm that we have published recently, and it contains HBS antigen as a marker that should be low, as low as possible before stopping. And I want to conclude that virological relapses after nuclear discontinuation can be predicted by S antigen levels, HPV, RNA, and anti-HPC at end of treatment. But the flares, the nature of the flares needs to be um, um, deeply understood, better understood, before we can um, say what that really means. The low S antigen, S -antigen levels at the end of treatment are predictive for S antigen loss after stopping nukes. Lowering S antigen levels with novel treatments, and this is something I find really interesting, if we can lower S antigen levels with novel treatments that may not lead to functional cure but to low S antigen levels, maybe this is a good precondition for stopping nukes afterwards. And the value of new biomarkers for response to nuke discontinuation needs to be more researched. Thank you very much.